Hey, what's up guys, it's Darkroom Duels, and today we're gonna to be doing a mutant deck profile. So this deck is probably one of the most innovative decks that I've seen in a long time in Yu-Gi-Oh! And I really like the way that they created this deck. It's super cool and super neat, and it's really cool that right out of the gate, it's really powerful. This deck is really crazy and relatively budget compared to a lot of the other decks inside of Phantom Rage. This deck is super cool, and if you haven't picked it up, you definitely should. So without further ado guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell on there, Team Combat Part Notification Squad, and definitely check out the Patreon down in the description below because we got some awesome words for you guys, like getting your name description every single video, getting signed cards in the mail, or even getting to quest a deck profile every single month that you are a patron along with Test Hands. So, without further ado, guys, let's get straight on into this one. So, first off, you're going to be playing two copies of Mutant Beast. So, Mutant Beast is a really neat card that basically all of your mutants have interactions between monster spells and traps, which is a really cool effect. That this one has the particular ability that it cannot be special summoned except with the effect of a mutant card. And your opponent cannot target this card with monster effects. And then you can only use the effect, following effect of mutant beast once per turn. When your opponent activates a spell card or an effect, quick effect, you can banish one card from your hand or field, negate the activation, and if you do destroy the, or banish that card. And if this card in its owner's possession is destroyed by an opponent's card, you can target one of your banished mutant traps and add it back to your hand. Which is really neat. As you can see, can't be affected by monsters. And it has a spell negation in it, and then it, you can add a banish mutant trap back to your hand, which is really cool that it has monster spells and traps, like I stated at the beginning. We then play two copies of Mutant Arsenal. Mutant Arsenal is probably one of my favorite, just because it's the biggest beat stick of all three, and has a really neat effect that it cannot be special summoned except with a mutant card, and your opponent cannot target this card with trap effects. And you can always see the effect of the following effect of Mutant Arsenal once per turn that when your opponent activates a monster effect you can quick effect banish one card from your hand or field target one monster on the field and banish it that's why i love this card because it just banishes a card on the field which is super super nice now the only downside of this card is it does target and if this card in its owner's possession destroy by an opponent's card effect then you can target one of your banished mutant spells and add it back to your hand then we play a single copy of mutant mist now mutant mist is the one that i think is probably the weakest of the three but it's still a good card that you need at least as a one of that has the ability that it cannot be special summon except with a mutant card and your opponent cannot target this card with spell effects and then once per turn um you can only use each effect of this card once per turn and then when your opponent activates a trap effect which is going to be kind of rare unless they impermanence you or evenly matched you you can uh quick effect banish one card from your hand or field and then you draw two cards and if this card in its owner's possession is destroyed by an opponent's a card you can target one of your banished mutant monsters and add it back to your hand so again really good card but you really just need it as a one of we then play three copies of mutant m05 mutant m05 is one of the two starters in the entire deck and is a really really good card actually it's a really good starter that if this card is normal or special summon you get to add a mutant monster from your deck to your hand you can have another copy of mo5 and then you can tribute this card and banish the card from your hand um or face up in your field a special summon one of from your uh hand or deck from the banished monster or material if you banish a monster you summon mutant beast if you banish a spell you uh special summon mutant mist if you banish a trap you special summon mutant arsenal which is pretty good i like the fact that they have corresponding between monster spell and trap which is the whole theme of the deck we then play three copies of Mutant ST46. 46 is really good because it has the ability that if this card is normal or special summon, you get to add a mutant spell or trap from your deck to your hand. And then you can tribute this card and it has the same ability that you banish a card um, to be able to special summon a mutant, either monster, which is beast, spell, mist, and trap is arsenal from your hand um from your hand or your deck which is a really good effect to be able to just special summon those cards which is a really 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 good effect we then play three copies of necroface necroface is a personal tech that i actually love in this deck because it works so well with your st46 and your m05 because it has the ability that if it's banished you banish the top five cards off of an, both players decks in this particular deck you're not super worried if you banish something I will say, as long as you have your ST46 and your copy of MO5, you're fine. Um, so what's really interesting about this card is you banish it, special summon beast from the deck, and then you banish the top five cards off your deck and your opponent's deck. Which if, for example, you're playing against Salamangrates and you hit their gazelle and their circle or their roar and their rage, the game's over. 
If you're playing against Dragonlink and you banish their one of Phalanx, they're in a really bad position. If you play against any deck that's playing Dragoons and you hit Red Eyes Fusion, you hit Dark Magician, or you hit the copy of Red Eyes Black Dragon, you just totally lock them out of Dragoons. This card is so good in corresponding with the ST48 or 46 and the M05. This card is ridiculous. You need to play it as a 3 of. We then play three copies of Dimensional Shifter, which is probably one of the most powerful hand traps in the entire game right now because it has such good effect that if you have no cards in your graveyard you can quick effect send this card from your hand to the graveyard until the end of the next turn uh every card that's going to be sent to the graveyard is banished instead which can help you so much in this meta right now especially with so many cards having recursions from the graveyard this card is just such a good card to put on the to discard right at the beginning of the duel and then be able to just shut down your opponent some some decks you discard this and it just ends their whole turn which is really good we then play three copies of cypher frame gear gamma gamma is really good in here because it can negate other hand traps if you don't have the copy of dimensional shifter you have the copy of gamma to be able to just stop all the other hand traps which is really really good um, and then we play a single copy of driver as well driver is really good because you just it's the one brick pretty much in the deck but it's still good because you have to have it for gamma so that's it for the monsters guys let's get into the spells so for the spells for the spells, we are going to be playing a single copy of Gold Sarcophagus. Gold Sarcophagus is a personal tech in this deck that I really like because it can send your copy of Necroface from your deck to the graveyard or send the particular mutant card that you need out of the deck to be able to use one of your other mutant cards to get uh, as a fusion material or to get it as a uh, different card that you're going to search. So this card's really good to help out the deck a lot. One copy of Emergency Teleport because it can get any of your mutant low-level monsters onto your side of the field between the ST46 or the MO5. This card's really good just to be able to get onto your side of the field. Two copies of Mutant Fusion. I feel like two is fine because we play Anaconda in the extra deck. Um, it's not a bad card to hard draw, but you also have traps that help you fusion summon. So this card as a two of is totally fine just playing it too and what it does is you get to fusion summon one mutant fusion from your extra deck um by banishing fusion materials from your uh, listed from it from your hand and or field and if your opponent has activated a card or effect this turn you can also use one monster from each from your deck and graveyard as a fusion material so for example if you're trying to summon ultimaius um, onto your side of the field you can also banish level eight monsters from your graveyard to summon this or from your deck or uh, not from your deck but from your graveyard or your banner yeah from your deck or in your graveyard and then one from your hand which is pretty easy because you're going to be burning through them pretty quickly anyways we then play three of the mutant evolution lab mutant evolution lab is a good three of in the deck and is a great field spell in this particular deck then when it's activated you get to special summon one of your mutant level four or lower mutant monsters from your hand and um hand or that is banished then the mutant monsters you control gain 100 attack for each of your banished mutant monster cards uh, with different names and then once per turn during your main phase you can place one mutant monster from your hand um, on the bottom of the deck and then if you do you get to draw a card which is super helpful if you don't want to have like a copy of beast mist or arsenal in your hand you can just use these um, to be able to get them back on the bottom of the deck so you can special summon them so they're not bricks so that's it for the spells guys let's get into the traps now i will say this deck plays a lot of traps which is why i like arsenal better so we're going to be opening up with three copies of infinite impermanence because we're just going to help out stop our opponent from doing anything at all and this card is just really good at saying no to every card effect that they have and it's a really good card to be able to banish for the copy of your arsenal we then play three copies of mutant cry mutant cry is a neat card because it reminds me a lot of shadow schism that it has the ability that during your main phase you can fusion summon one mutant fusion monster from your extra deck by shuffling the fusion materials listed on it into the deck from among cards on the field or in the graveyard or your banished cards and you can only use the effect of this card once per turn so for example if your opponent hits all three of your fusion monsters like your beast or your your materials your beast your arsenal and your copy of your um mist and they're all in the graveyard or banished or in your on your field you can just flip this and summon the ultimaius onto your side of the field extremely easily and it's just an overall really good card you're usually going to use this to summon synthesis but it is an option to use it to get those other materials 
We then play three copies of Mutant Expansion. Mutant Expansion is a really neat three of in this deck. That when this card is activated, you get to take a level four or lower mutant monster from your deck and either add it to your hand or special summon it. And if a level eight or higher mutant monster you control would be destroyed by a card effect, you can manage this card from your graveyard instead, or, um, which is really your you control instead, which is a really good effect to be able to just protect your mutant monsters. We then play three copies of There Can Only Be One. And as you notice in this deck, probably Probably, each player can only control one monster of each type. That's totally fine because you probably didn't notice this if you didn't play this deck, or you haven't played this deck before. But Mutant Beast is actually a beast. Your copy of Arsenal is a machine, and your copy of Mist is a spellcaster. So they're all different types, along with your copy of Ultimus, which is a psychic, and your copy of Synthesis, which is also a psychic. So you kind of got to watch out when you get down to Synthesis and your Ultimius, but you're usually not going to have both of them on your side of the field at the same exact time. So it's not that big of a deal to just have these as different materials. And then you have to keep in mind as well that your copy of your MO5 and your copy of the ST46 will be getting in and off the field as quickly as possible. So you're not going to have both of them on the field at the same time which making this card ridiculously good and pivotal to stopping your opponent's plays so that's it for the traps guys let's get into the extra deck so for the extra deck we're going to be playing double mutant ultimaya so i feel like unless you're playing extravagance you just need to um this card's ridiculously hard to get into right now um i've seen people even taking in cyberstein and i even consider for a minute playing cyberstein to get in this card because it's like uh <laughs> invoked makaba on diesel fuel this card is ridiculous that what it does is it already is a thousand attack points higher than Makaba. And it has the ability that when this card is activated, when a card effect is activated, you can quick effect banish a mutant card from your hand graveyard or face from your field of the same type, monster spell or trap, negate the activation of do banish that card, which is the same basic effect as Makaba, except Makaba can banish any card where this can only banish mutant cards. And it also has the ability that you can banish, um, if this fusion summon card you control is destroyed by your opponent's card effect, you can add up to three banish mutant cards one each of a monster spell or trap to your hand as well so it replaces itself by giving you three cards to get advantage back we then play three copies of Mutant Synthesis. Mutant Synthesis is really good because it has it's really easy to summon first off and you just have to use two monsters with different attributes which is not that big of a deal to summon this card and if this card is fusion summon you get to target one card on the field and just instantly destroy it which is pretty good and then when your opponent activates a card or effect you can quick effect activate this effect for the rest of the turn this face of card is unaffected by the effect of opponent's cards of the same type of monster spell or trap as the card as that card and if the, this fusion summon card you control is destroyed by your opponent's card you can add one of your banished mutant cards from your hand from your uh, banished pile to your hand so it's kind of like the idea that these are constantly evolving and it's a really cool aspect like if they activate something it sees the threat and then it evolves to protect itself, which is kind of cool because it really reminds me of Resident Evil. We then play a single copy of Cyframe Lord Omega because you do play the Omega and the, um, you play the copy of Gamma in the deck, so it's really easy to go into this card. Then for the Link Monsters, we're actually going to be playing a copy of Access Code Talker. Uh, we play a lot of Link Monsters in this deck, but you're not going to be going into a lot of them in this deck. You usually just go for Synthesis and push through. So Synthesis or uh, Access Code Talker gives you additional pops on your side of the field. Appaloosa gives you additional board negations. Um, BLS is really good because BLS is actually one that I summon quite frequently in this deck because the copy of BLS comes in handy because you can use one of your high level mutant monsters with this uh, as a material for this and then it gets all those added effects. Unicorn because it can spin stuff. Phoenix because it can pop spells or traps. Lambda because it helps make your copies of your gamma still live while you have them in your hand if you control a monster. Uh, IP Mascarena because it can help you go into Unicorn or it can help you go into Appaloosa during your opponent's turn. Cross Sheep because you play so many fusion monsters in the deck. And then Anaconda, which is the other one that I pretty regularly go into because you can use Mutant Fusion in the deck. And if your opponent activates any card during the turn, any monster effect during the turn or anything, you can just immediately use cards from your hand or your graveyard in your deck as well, which is 
pretty awesome to go into synthesis by using cards in your deck. This card's really, this deck is really fun, I have to say. Um, I'm kind of interested to do live duels with this deck because it's really weird and really cool. And I'm really interested to see what kind of support they actually do for this deck because this is just the first wave and it's already this flushed out. Like this deck could seriously become a meta deck very, very quickly um, in the next set if they do more TCG like exclusives for this deck so i'm really interested to see where this deck is going because this deck i hope is not the only support that happens for this deck because it's really fun as is so anyways guys this is darkroom duels don't forget to like comment subscribe definitely tell me which one of your favorite is your favorite among the mutant boss monsters mine personally is arsenal because of the artwork but definitely tell me which one you guys think between beast arsenal and mist but anyways guys this is darkroom duels don't forget to like comment subscribe hit the bell on the same bar notification squad and definitely check out the patreon in the description below and we'll see See you guys in the next video. See you later, guys.